Kevin McAlerney, Senior Vice President, Network Engineering, Engineering and Platform Services for Comcast Cable, is responsible for managing Comcast Converged Fiber Rich Network, which offers video, voice, and data services to more than 53 million homes and businesses in 39 states, plus the District of Columbia. Good morning. I'm going to take it up from uh, layer one, two, and, and talk a little bit about some layer three um, elements and, and, and what we're looking at um, from in Comcast, specifically on IPv6, but not just as an addressing scheme, but really as an architecture. So the first thing I want to talk about 10 years ago, sitting in Comcast, we're doing five-year plans. And, and essentially, the five-year plans with the way IP addressing was going, the way new devices were getting put in the network, customer subscribers were growing, the prediction was in about five years, IPv4 would run out of address space. Well, as you can imagine, if you run out of address space, your business stops. So 10 years ago, we said it would happen in five years. And that was the, the chicken little, um, you know, we have to do something now. So we really started the V6 uh, process back then because the concept of the business stopping just was not an option. Um, and then five years went by, and guess what? We didn't run out of IPv4 space. And then we said, no, it's going to happen next year. And we didn't have run out of IP space, and then it was going to happen next year. Um, but what did happen is about a year ago this week, Aaron did run out of IPv4 space. And, and this is it, and, and if, you're, if you're not on this train and you don't have a plan, then adding new subscribers is just not uh, plausible. But when we talked to V6, both internally and externally, the, the typical perception was, yeah, it's more address space. And if you talk to a non-math major and you say it's a 32-bit address in V4 and it's a 128-bit address in V6, uh, they'll say, oh, yeah, well, that's about four times bigger, right? Um, so and, and a lot of things is people, there's a lot of companies that just don't care because they don't have that same need for growth in, um, in IP space. So this is the perception of what the difference is between IPv4 and V6. But in reality, this, this is really what the difference is. It's the difference between the IPv4 internet is a beach ball. And relatively speaking, the IPv6 um, internet space is the sun. Um, and to put that in, in terms, today, you know, if you have broadband subscribers, you give one IP address per, per household. And that's very typical for a V4. With V6, we give 16 quintillion addresses to every household. Um, so what would you do with 16 quintillion addresses? Well, maybe you, would, you think about the network differently. You think about your, your applications differently. And also, um, so we've rolled V6 to any, anybody who has V6-capable devices in their house can get V6 today. And today, about 30% of all of our traffic is V6. By the end of the year, it will be half of all our traffic. And by next year, it will be the majority of our traffic. So it's, it's real, it's growing, and, but the second thing is, like I said, how do you look at the network differently if it's, if it's is it more than just addresses? So, you know, I want to talk about a, a little bit of what else can you do with IPv6. And, and it's not, like I said, you can do things with just an, a 128-bit address space, but you can also do some advanced features with segment routing that are, that are going to get really interesting. And as we, as we develop this and as we, we work with our internal and external partners, people looking at it as, hey, uh, you know, would I, would I manage the network differently? Would I, would I develop my applications differently? So I'm going to give you the, my first question to my team was come up with a use case because no one can understand, you know, yeah, it's a lot of addresses. So what would you do with it? So here's one use case. I have a couple. Um, so the classic use case is just to be able to, inside the packet, tell the path that you want the traffic to go through the network. And this is segment routing. So inside the packet, you can specify, I want to hit this hop, then I want to hit this hop. I don't care what you do in between, then I want to hit this hop. And it looks a little bit like MPLSTE. But the difference is with V6SR, uh, it's the packet telling the network how it wants to go through. It works across multiple networks. It doesn't have to be within a single MPLS network. It works um, in the home. It works in data centers. So with V6SR versus MPLS-TE, it's the packet telling the network how it wants to operate. So, so that's the, the high-level difference, much more, much more capabilities and functionalities. But what else could you do with it? 
Um, so here's an example of using v6 um, segment routing to do, to treat the packet differently through the network. And one of the things that we were challenged like, is I don't want to run multicast in the core. It's just, co it's complex. How do I simplify the core network? Well, we, we need multicast, so we have to run multicast um, somewhere. But with SR, you can actually program, since you can program every path along the way, you can say, I want to start the packet as a unicast packet to a CMTS or a DSLAM. And then from there, I want to turn it into multicast. And, and that's just by specifying the hops along the way. You can, you can very specifically specify what you want to do. So you can go from multicast to unicast to any cast and back. And, and so there's lots of added functionality that you get really out of the, um, the packet itself. So here, here's an example. Everybody, you know, as you think through application, you have load balancing requirements. Um, you have geo um, location requirements. You say, what's the fastest server? And, and you have to put extra hardware in to make that happen. But with, with um, segment routing, you can actually send out a SYN packet to an Anycast address. And you can listen to what comes back. And the Anycast address, the, the SYN act that comes back, can specify which server that it wants you to go to. And then at that point, the server can be, the client can be bound to the server um, so it is, and, and not listen to any cast. And then that, that communication can be corrected again and sent to another server. So you can do load balancing inside the application, inside the packets, without any special hardware. And if you think about some of the things that we have to do to, within the network, is we, we typically have had to add more hardware to do more advanced features. And with segment routing, you can actually, um, again, put it in the packet. Um, so no need for advanced um, load balancers. Um, and the other thing, and I don't have the example here, but we've been looking at ways to service chain the, the communication together. So from, with, again, within the packet, it says the first thing I want to do is go to a, um, a, a, a transcoder. The second hop along the way, I want to take a specific route. The third hop along the way, I want to go into a just-in-time packager. So you can do service chaining within the segment routing capabilities. So, so you know, to kind of summarize, what are the things that you get out of this? Um, the first thing to note is um, our estimates, at least on our network, is the IPv4 growth um, will stop in about 2020. All v6 traffic will take all growth. v4 traffic will um, will uh, stop growing. There'll still be traffic out there, but it won't be the majority of growth. So, what does that mean? It means maybe different hardware, maybe deprecate v4. I don't want to carry v4 in my core, maybe v4 becomes a service. I don't want to put in carry grade NAT that I have to scale. Um, and it's, it's really th thinking about the testing that we have to do, the devices that we have making them IPv6 only, we don't have to test a dual stack, so it makes things simpler. It makes things cleaner. Today, the IPv4 routing table is 650,000 routes. With, um, with v6, it's, it's 33,000 routes. So it's, you don't have to break the networks up so much to get more efficiencies out of them. You have just so much um, address space. The other thing that, that others have measured on our network is applications run faster. And Facebook is claiming 20 to 40% speed improvements on, on raw V6 traffic than V4 traffic. It doesn't have to go through NATs or processing. So the, the, I think kind of the last thing to think about is with this number of addresses, um, it, you can literally name everything that has existed, does exist, and will exist. You can also treat things that are, they're not just devices anymore. An IP address for a device, it could be a memory location, it, can be, um, it could be a block of storage, it can be a, an application process. So what we see is the network becomes the path of getting data um, through applications, not necessarily through devices. Thank you very much.